welcome all to lecture 8 of subsurface exploration introduction and technique involves. So, uh, as we had we are discussing in, in last couple of uh, classes about different geotechnical investigation methods. Today also we will be talking about one more geotechnical investigation method. So, uh, before going to today's class material, we will discuss about whatever we had discussed in last class. So, last class we actually discussed about dilatometer test, how you do the flat dilatometer test, what is the procedure, what kind of typical field records you get once you lower your uh, uh, dilatometer at different different depths, you start uh, uh, bringing the membrane in contact with the blade, if you remember, recall, measure the pressure which is called P naught, then pushing the center of the membrane by 1.1 mm towards the soil or overall like uh, pushing the soil uh, by giving a deformation of 1.1 mm that is P 1, then there will be certain correction which has to be applied in order to uh, uh, take into account the stiffness of the membrane into account as well as the effect of water table. And then uh, after applying those correction, your, your uh, corrected P naught and P 1 value you will, uh, you will come to know. Based on those values, you can determine different properties as we had estimated in uh, last class. So, what are the limitations, what are the advantages we had discussed and one numerical problem we, we had actually discussed. So, so far we had, uh, if you go to geotechnical investigation which are called as semi-direct method as uh, precisely mentioned in the last class. So, these are the list of geotechnical investigation methods which we, we uh, uh, primarily target to focus, uh, focus on like vein shear test, standard penetration test, cone penetration test until the last class even the dilatometer test was, was complete. So, in today's class we will be discussing about what is pressure meter test, other tests we have already covered. So, pressure meter test um, um, very less in many of the courses very less about pressure meter test is discussed. Uh, so, um, maybe uh, it will be more useful to um, uh, the people who are really interested in uh, exploring field data designers even exploration uh, program uh, managers. So, let us hear what is pressure meter test. So, pressure meter test before going into detail, subsurface exploration targets to assess characteristics of the soil or rock available below the ground surface up to the zone of influence. We, we all know like uh, depending upon the kind of foundation, depending upon the load, depending upon subsurface material, uh, uh, the zone of influence may change particularly depending upon the choice of the foundation and overcoming load. So, depending upon and then depending upon what is the zone of influence, we will be interested to find out the characteristics of the soil, if soil is available or characteristics of the rock, if soil is not available or outcrop is there or shallow uh, uh, depth rock is available. So, that will help in understanding what kind of soil or rock deposits are there, strength characteristics and other parameters. In terms of parameters to be used, for design purpose, our requirements mainly target for strength, what is the strength of different material whether it rock, soil, what is the deformation characteristic against external loading. So, maybe you can call it as uh, 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 load versus uh, deformation characteristics or maybe pressure versus deformation characteristics. So, uh, for a known amount of pressure, how much is the deformation taking place in the soil, then in situ horizontal stresses. In case of retaining structures also it may be of interest and, and uh, uh, again for many other purpose it might be interested. And then permeability particularly for uh, uh, when we are targeting for de design of barriers or maybe uh, uh, filters or maybe particularly for any kind of assessment below the ground water table. So, even permeability determination is also important. So, these are the kind of parameter which we are interested to determine when we are going for in situ geotechnical investigation of subsurface medium. So, Lewis Minard in 1954 developed pressure meter test which can actually uh, for controlling the compaction effort. So, under known value of compactive efforts how to control the compaction behavior required particularly at the runway on Paris airport. So, in order to control the compaction in order to control the effort applied for compaction or in order to control the qu quality. Uh, of compaction uh, at uh, Paris airport, Louis Minard in 1954 actually so, uh, developed this pressure meter test. Since then, significant success has been achieved to develop correlations. So, correlations are very important because not every time 
you may get uh, soil sample not every time you are actually able to determine the in situ strength you are not able to determine whatever parameter we had listed out like deformation characteristic in situ strength uh, in situ horizontal stress permeability but by means of correlation which have been developed particularly for soil type particularly for uh, the method you use for investigation type particularly uh, again based on uh, over consolidation ratio based on uh, relative density even such correlations uh, may be region specific or uh, country specific as well. So, such correlation when, when over a period of time since 1954 people realized like different parameters of the soil can be very easily correlated by means of the uh, typical field measurements whatever you are doing in pressure meter test. Biggest advantage here is because you need not bring you are not bringing the soil sample onto the surface or to the laboratory for determining the shear strength parameter you are actually testing the soil in its in situ condition. So, this is the biggest advantage even in the dilatometer test you are having this this kind of uh, 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 advantage you, you need not bring the soil sample that was particularly useful uh, um, uh, for, for in situ in, uh, investigation this is also useful for in situ investigation of the soil. So, in comparison to collection of samples and conducting laboratory tests you bring out the sample because you are interested to find out what is the soil type what is the strength characteristic in situ uh, uh, what is permeability characteristics uh, and and depending upon the overburden pressure sometime one test may be suitable sometime that uh, test may not be suitable so you have to go for other test but in when you are going for pressure meter test you can actually deal with larger amount of pressures here uh, in comparison to previous discussed method so, you, you need not bring the sample you can actually uh, uh, do in situ investigation and those kinds of tests are nowadays more and more required because you are not bringing the sample you can actually determine its in situ strength in its original form very much similar to whatever we were discussing about uh, uh, trial pits, test pits, but only thing in those cases we can actually bring the soil sample, we can actually access the soil sample or maybe by uh, visual inspection or by uh, simple uh, uh, de test which are designed to give a qualitative information about the strength you can use it for te uh, 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 test fits, but here you are actually determining actually what is the shear strength property. So, quantitative assessment is there. It has been observed that once you go for simple test most of the time the findings or the outcomes of the results may or may not be reliable. On the other hand if you go for too sophisticated test it requires time I mean these are time consuming even for, for field recording as well as uh, interpretation sometime it will lead to some uh, serious errors also and most important those tests are uh, expensive ones. So, when we go for simple test you have some uh, limitation and you go for too sophisticated test you have other limitations. In situ test on the other hand interpretation of stress condition this is another diff difficulty if you are going for in situ test interpretation of stress strain condition because whatever kind whatever nature of stresses you are actually inducing in the soil are those stresses in uh, um, develop in control environment if those are in control environment or the soil is undergoing uh, very specific or well defined uh, 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 change in characteristics then it will be easy for the interpretation but if you are inducing some kind of stresses but you are not you you, you are not able to control the, the the behavior of the soil corresponding to that stress may definitely the interpretation will be a big challenge. So, that is what it is telling like in, in case of in situ test you go interpretation of stress strain condition you are uh, you are inducing some kind of loading pressure, but you are not you are not able to control the behavior of the soil like soil if you are interested to find out shear strength you are not able to control whether the soil is undergoing only shear failure or some compressive tensile other failures are also there. So, this is the biggest uh, limitation or challenge when, when we select for uh, in situ investigation. These limitations particularly in pressure meter test are very well addressed since the boundaries are moved in control environment. So, you are actually inducing some kind of uh, loading which is causing deformation in the soil, but you have designed the method such that the deformation in the soil can happen only in particular direction maybe along particular uh, 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 I mean particular only specific nature whatever you are interested that kind of uh, deformation is only possible in the soil you are making sure it so that whatever uh, 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 quantitative assessment you do you will be more confident about interpreting the field results. So, the test procedure it consists of 
a lateral uh, a lateral expansion of cylindrical membrane so you, are, you will be having a probe which depending upon the depth of your interest you are actually going to lower the probe in the probe itself you will be having a cylindrical membrane depending upon the depth you lower the membrane and then then uh, this membrane will not be one but it will consist of three cells so this membrane is capable of expanding and deflating once you reach a particular depth you are going to apply some pressures because of which the membrane is going to expand so generally we have three membranes so the membrane which is coming in the central part is called as measuring cell the membrane which so above the measuring cell there will be one membrane uh, and below it, it there will be one membrane each of these are called as guide cells so each of uh, in with, with the uh, with reference to the central membrane or measuring cell you will be having one guide cell on the top one guide cell at the bottom so pressure required is supplied so you you have the probe which which is having the membrane arrangement on the periphery of it you lowered it at the depth of interest then you apply pressure from the surface as a result of which different membrane will start inflating so the pressure required will be supplied from the surface by another assembly which is capable of pro providing um, the pressure so just like when we were discussing about dilatometer test we knew like depending upon the depth depending upon the uh, a soil type which probably you can you can expect at the site of interest you are you will be prepared for the uh, uh, selection of the reaction frame here also depending upon the depth you have to apply more and more pressure but now because here the pressure is getting generated by means of air or water those those kinds of reaction frame whatever we had discussed in earlier um, cases particularly for dpt uh, dmt and cpt may not be applicable here here you are applying the pressure by means of surface assembly by means of a tubing arrangement so there will be a tube attached to the surface assembly and whatever pressure you are measure uh, you are applying from the surface assembly it will be measured so whatever pressure you have applied at the depth just like your dilatometer test you are actually quantifying that pressure by means of pressure gauge readings upon application of pressure what will happen the central membrane will start inflating so if, if this is a central membrane you start applying some pressure and this, this is uh, depending upon what kind of pressure meter you are using you can actually do the test in already existing borehole you can actually go for uh, a test which is drilling and driving both uh, i mean driving into the soil on its own and then uh, loading and unloading of the soil also same type and and the combination of these two also so what we do upon um, um, lowering it uh, we we apply some pressure as a result of which the central membrane or the measuring cell will start inflating as a result of inflation what will happen it will apply pressure on the walls of the membrane and once the walls comes in contact with the soil it will start actually pushing the soil back to its original position or further beyond that that we will be discussing in coming slides so upon reaching the uh, upon application of pressure the central membrane starts inflating or bulging out as a result the soil surrounding the membrane undergoes radial deformation so if soil is here because of the membrane which is there in the central part it will again start undergoing some kind of deformation so you, you are actually applying some pressure and corresponding to that pressure how the soil is responding you are going to uh, uh, observe it in terms of deformation so you are actually doing two things what is the pressure what is the deformation pressure deformation and so on and so forth at each depth of interest so that's how you will be able to understand how much is the uh, deformation what is the deformation characteristics of the soil this deformation is directly related how you quantify the deformation because you are actually applying some kind of pressure so this deformation is directly related to the volume of water whatever you are supplying through the uh, pressure tube you are actually supplying the water into the central membrane in order to increase the pressure this water is again pressurized under gas or air pressure as a result of which there will be increase in the pressure and this increase in pressure will tend to um, uh, expand the central membrane and this as a result will induce more and more deformation in the soil which is we are going to measure so pressure you are going to measure from uh, 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 the surface assembly pressure gauges and deformation you are going to measure by means once you know how much is the amount of water you have actually pumped into the central membrane or uh, measuring cell same thing you keep on doing at different different stages of loading and uh, try to observe how, how much is the uh, uh, deformation 
thus the relation, so collectively you can call it the relation between applied pressure, how much is the pressure you have applied and what is the corresponding deformation in the soil of course at the depth of the interest can be developed. So you are, you, though you are not bringing the soil sample in onto the surface for laboratory investigation, but actually in in situ condition itself, you are actually going to uh, investigate how the soil will behave under different loading conditions. So the test, this is suitable for soils as well as in rocks, you can do the test both in soil as well as in the rock depending upon what kind of, uh, I mean whether you are, you are uh, expecting soil to be encountered during the uh, 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 investigation you will be ready for that particular pressure. If you are encountering or chances are there you can encounter rock also, that idea you can get if you explore some preliminary investigation or the investigation already done near your site of interest. So that will give you an idea uh, on an average what will be the uh, range of the pressure you will be dealing with. So as I mentioned, this pressure meter test generally consists of three types. One is called as Minard uh, type pressure meter test that is MPM. So this kind of probe is generally lowered into an existing borehole. So you have a borehole in which you are interested to find out how much is the in situ strength property of the soil because this is not the traditional borehole where you are actually going, uh, which you had conducted for, uh, for uh, your uh, boring or for sampling purpose. This is, this will be relatively smaller in diameter as we will come to know in uh, coming slides. So you, you actually going to drill a very small diameter hole and so that you can actually lower the probe and after you lower the probe there will be some pressure assembly, there will be some volume assembly which is actually going to measure you how much is the pressure you have applied once the probe is lowered in order to cause deformation in the soil. So this is when you are, um, when your pressure meter or the probe is lowered into an existing borehole. This is called as Maynard type pressure meter test or MPM, cell boring pressure meter where the boring itself is done by the probe itself. So that you call as cell boring pressure meter or as SBP. The third one is push in pressure meter in which the soil is, uh, the device is actually pushed upon reaching the base of the borehole. So up till the base of the borehole you are actually going to lower, after that it will become like cell boring kind of thing. So it is more common once you go for offshore investigation. So you go up till the bed or maybe some, some more if, if uh, on the bed surface you found some lot of uh, 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 foreign materials or lot of uh, the material which were not supposed to be here. So you actually go for a small boring and after that you, you, you install your push in pressure meter test. As I mentioned previously also over the period of time people have, rea have realized like whatever pressure uh, or field measurements you are doing from this test, you are actually going to correlate with lot of um, uh, uh, properties of the soil and rock and that is why it has gained, this, this test has gained lot of popularity in the, uh, uh, in, in the previous years. So most common for offshore investigation. It has to be highlighted here that uh, Minard type pressure meter test is most common when you go for in situ investigation particularly on uh, ground surface. You are having a, uh, so you actually drill a borehole, small diameter maybe 65-75 mm uh, uh, is the diameter, then you lower the probe, again depending upon what is the uh, diameter of the borehole, you can actually select the probe. There are uh, uh, terminologies given for, for different uh, probe sizes. So the type of field record, so whatever we were discussing here, it is like you are having some assembly here and you have actually lowered the probe so this is your probe i can uh, call it this is like probe this is your depth of interest So there is tubing arrangement is here from which you are actually going to uh, apply water under pressure and how much is the volume. So there will be, this will be like pressure gauge and similarly there will be another gauge which will be controlling how much is the volume injected, volume of water. injected 
to inflate inflate the measuring cell okay this is a probe now along this probe there will be you can call it like throughout there will be like this membrane you call it as and same way there will be another membrane here so this is like on the periphery attached on all the sides that's why i am giving you like this so this is called as this will be called as top guard cell this will be called as bottom guard cell and then in between there will be another cell i'm going to give different legion for this this is called as measuring cell why because whatever pressure you are applying in order to uh, uh, understand the behavior of the soil in terms of deformation that will be measured by means of this cell the other two cells are measured because if you don't put uh, suppose this is your uh, um, measuring cell if you do not put uh, uh, and this is your probe and this is suppose your bore hole so this is your bore hole same thing because your bore hole should be slightly bigger than the 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 probe or your um, expanded um, uh, membrane okay so if if this membrane this is called as measuring cell if it does not have any guard cell on top and bottom what will happen when you start inflating it what will happen it will start bulging on this side also in this side also but in addition to this there will be end effect which will be like this and like this so there will be in addition to like we ensure like because the, you are you are you are interested to find out the deformation directly by correlating with the volume so you ensure that the height in which the exp, the the inflation is happening it's not uh, it's not changing only inflation is happening in radial direction so you you only assume like inflation in radial direction so whatever like the measuring cell which was before the, the start of the test was in cylindrical position radial direction even during loading also it will become in radial direction so expansion should always be in radial direction so in order to nullify this end effects it will be there for both top and bottom so you provide actually here the guard cells these guard cells will also be loaded with equal amount of pressure which will ensure equal pressure as measuring cell now the pressure is same since the pressure is same in, same in guarding cell uh, guard cell as well as in the measuring cell there will not be any end effect so whatever uh, 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 movement will be there in uh, that will be possible only in radial direction similarly there will be another guard cell here which will ensure no movement in this direction no end effect no end effect this is called as end effect the kind of bulging happening at the uh, top and bottom most uh, uh, part of this uh, measuring cell that is called as end cell uh, uh, end effect okay so no end effect due to due to guard cell now another thing so this is like i told something what is kind of measurements and why you are providing guard cell now what is happening here if you consider only the measuring cell suppose this is your bore hole and this is your measuring cell which will start of course you can call it initial position of measuring cell two things will happen one is like once you you uh, drill a bore hole 
the material which was in, in, in its initial position or intact position there will be some kind of uh, uh, release in the material uh, like there will be some kind of release or readjustment in the material position or this material will come onto the surface like this. So, the material is no more in its initial position. Now, you started applying pressure what, result, what will happen as a result of which there will be increase in the uh, 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 radius of the measuring cell. It will start deflating, inflating. So, slowly uh, from, first of all it will come in contact with the material which actually uh, bulge and come on to the uh, near to the measuring cell uh, periphery. So, first of all the, 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 the uh, measuring cell uh, periphery will come in contact first of all there will be a gap. So, some uh, pressure will be um, required in order to expand it in, in, in this gap and then the measuring cell will come in contact with the soil which is slightly released one from its original position. Then it will push this soil to its back position or original position. Since this soil is not in its intact position though the pressure required to bring the soil in its normal position or original position will be significantly lesser than the in situ strength of the soil. So, one is like pushing the soil back, pushing the soil back to its position to its initial position. If you see the same thing what will happen here, there will be volume, you can call it maybe in cc and there will be pressure because you are actually measuring two things. What will happen? Because initially, so some volume will be contained because of the cavity, some volume will be contained because of uh, because you are actually pushing the soil which might have marginally loosened because of because it is no more in its original position. So, as a result of which there will be like this which you can call it like pushing the soil you can call it as zone 1. Now, once the soil uh, reaches in uh, I mean to its original position it will uh, 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 re kind of regain its original strength. So, now after then onwards if you actually applied any kind of loading or pressure it will behave first of all in its it will behave like this. So, this is called as zone 1 after that it will behave just like any um, uh, soil behavior in initial part of loading it will be behave like linear. So, this is called as this is called as this was zone 1 this will be called as zone 2. So, 2 will be called as elastic behavior you can see here. So, it is almost like straight line here. Then after that if you again continue the loading what will happen there will be plastic behavior. So, zone 3 will be called as plastic behavior you can understand the same thing uh, considering like soil is there which is actually loosened because of some kind of excavation of disturbance now you started pushing the soil. So, by the time soil goes to its original position there will be um, uh, too much change in the volume, but even for small pressures what you can see here after it reaches to its original position there will be actually loading of virgin soil kind of thing. So, there will be linear uh, 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 pressure deformation characteristics which can be directly related to the volume also because uh, the deformation is happening in uh, radial direction alone. And then once it reaches its elastic limit, so this is called as point A, initiation of elastic limit this is called as point B, end of elastic limit and then once it reaches uh, in plastic limit you soon you will realize like after reaching certain volume there will be continuous increase in the volume even without increase in the pressure. So, this is called as limit pressure this is defined as P L and the volume corresponding to this will be called as V L. So, you keep on loading unless until the volume at failure will becomes 
and the, and the volume of the cavity that is the initial volume required uh, by the membrane itself plus V naught times 2. So, till the volume expansion reaches 2 or twice the volume when the soil was pushed back to its original position you consider it as Vf or, or the volume at the failure that is how you define the Vf and then corresponding to Vf what will be the pressure you call it as Pf. So, uh, once you uh, what you target you, you lower the probe and then start uh, uh, um, loading the, pre the, the central membrane or the measuring cell and corresponding to that equal amount of pressure you will apply to your guard cells. So, that there will not be any end effect and then start measuring at different different uh, pressure what, what is the volume till the volume change becomes constant you report that volume here for each pressure incre increment then you measure these volumes. So, this is called as V naught, this is called as uh, V f that will be like uh, that will be called as V f plus V naught that will be called as P f plus P naught that will be called as P l and V l. And suppose this is like V c that was the initial volume of cavity, uh, initial volume contained in the cavity. So, now the more on, so this is like after V c value, how much is the value change? So, you, you will be interested to um, uh, from field record, you are interested to find out how much is the value of V naught after which the linear uh, relation uh, started, then V f plus 2 times V naught that is. Uh, 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 this the, the, at the failure and then V c value that you can determine based on what kind of probe diameter, diameter of probe. So, charts are there based on which if you know what is the diameter of the uh, bore hole you can actually determine how much is the diameter of the probe and corresponding to that you can actually determine this is the volume of cavity. And then same way you are actually determining how much is the value of P naught how much is the value of Pf, how much is the value of Pl. So, these are the typical field recording based on which you can actually interpret the soil properties here. So, this is a uh, typical field record at any depth of the interest. Important observations here, there are certain important observations. In case you are conducting the pressure meter test in the soil, you should be ready so that you can apply a pressure limit. This Pl whatever you are mentioning it is called as pressure limit and the volume corresponding to that is called as limit volume or uh, volume limit. So, if you are doing the test in soil, there might be a chance you have to go for maximum pressure of 10 mega Newton per meter square. Same way if you are doing the test in rocks, you can actually go for maximum pressure of 20 mega Newton. Flexible membranes as I told you, these membranes are flexible so that you can, they can actually push the soil back to its initial position and then there will be loading and deformation will be there. So, uh, there might be a chance like the membrane material may get uh, uh, some kind of wear and tear because of the surrounding material which may be the soil which may be the rock. So, in order to prevent it the flexible membranes are covered with protective mem uh, material at times called also called as Chinese lantern generally made up of steel strips. So, these strips will cover the membrane. So, as a result of which when the membrane expands, these strips will not directly come in contact with the uh, 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 soil and there will not be any wear and tear or it will be minimal and, and you that is how you can uh, go for different kinds of uh, uh, I mean testing in different environment. At times membranes are used uh, these uh, flexible membranes are used in soils, but most common when you are going for harder material or maybe um, rock kind of medium. So, uh, so, one important observation here is total height that means the height of the central membrane plus the height of the two guard cells measuring cell and uh, one and top and bottom guard cell it should be at least 6 times the diameter of the probe. In, a, in addition to this in order, in order to ensure that the expanded membrane retains only cylindrical shape there should not be any end effect like the curvature I showed you above and bottom of the measuring cell. In order to have that possibility as minimum as possible, you try to provide uh, uh, the measuring cylinder significantly longer 
in comparison to its lateral dimension. That will ensure that the bulging uh, or the end effect will be as minimal as possible and what kind of movement or what kind of deformation is happening, it is only happening in radial direction. Okay. So, um, uh, we mentioned here like depending upon, so you know the diameter, it, you can observe here like traditional uh, diameter when we go for um, SPT test particularly it is 150 mm, but here you can see the diameter is ranges from 46 to 72 mm, this is, these are more st um, uh, standard values we use it and then depending upon this, so this is length of length of measuring cell measuring cell plus 2 guard cells. like the total uh, total length in which actually expansion is happening and then this is length of measuring cell and corresponding to the diameter of the borehole you have actually drilled you can actually determine what will be the designation of the uh, uh, probe you can call it as AX if you are going for 46 mm is the diameter of the borehole. So, corresponding to that 44 mm will be the diameter of the probe if you are going. So, you, you can understand when 44 mm probe you, you use there will be again cavity for 2 mm and corresponding to that cavity you can actually determine how much will be the value of V C. Same way if you are going for 60 mm as a uh, borehole diameter you can go for V X kind of uh, probe having diameter of 58. So, again there will be 2 mm cavity. Same way if you are going for NX probe that is uh, 70 mm diameter, the diameter of the borehole will be 72 mm. So, uh, diameter of the probe will always be lesser than uh, the diameter of the probe in these cases by margin of 2 mm and then this is the volume of the cavity that is like minimum volume which is required before actually the, the membrane comes in contact with the uh, um, uh, even even there is no soil. So, sometime what happen because of uh, drilling a borehole there will be some kind of readjustment of the uh, of the soil material along the periphery or uh, along the finished uh, surface it will come like this rather than purely vertical. So, whatever the volume required to push the membrane into its uh, original position that will be called as V, v naught. If, if it is too intact maybe at times you may find V naught value as minimal as uh, I mean a very minimal value it may be 0 also it may be slightly more and but depending upon the kind of probe you can understand because of there is some kind of gravity uh, cavity between the borehole as well as the probe. So, there will be always some value of V C available you can get to know depending upon what kind of probe you are using and uh, so this is like. Uh, uh, so, you can uh, once you know the diameter of the probe, once you know the diameter of the borehole, you can actually determine how much will the volume of the cavity, the, the, uh, the difference between the two. So, V C value is generally su supplied by the uh, supplier or maybe manufacturer also provide depending upon the probe diameter. So, uh, typical observations once you go for field testing, the water because you are you are targeting for significantly higher pressure. So, only air pressure will not be sufficient, you have to go for water pressure. So, water is there, but it will be injected into the membrane under gas pressure. So, water under ga gas pressure is used for expansion of central membrane or the, the measuring cell, while the guard cells are usually expanded to the same amount by means of air pressure. So, the change in radius is indicated by the volume of water you are actually used for filling up the expanded membrane. The pressure in the guard cell are kept equal to the measuring cell, the pressure in the guard cell is, is, uh, is kept equal to the measuring cell till the time it, it comes in, till the time the measuring cell comes in contact with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the diameter and the size of the borehole or the, or the wall of the borehole because after that whatever expansion will happen, it will, it will happen in radial direction alone. So, initially the pressure in the guard cell are kept equal to the measuring cell in order to avoid end effect, there will not be because both the, the, the measuring cell as well as the guard cell on the top or as well as the bottom are having equal pressure, so, so the interface will be perfectly horizontal. 
exactly cylindrical. So, whatever expansion is happening in the membrane, it will become uh, perfectly um, um, uh, cylindrical in shape. Thus, the guard cells are put in the setup to ensure only cylindrical expansion that we have been discussing again and again in order to minimize end effect, in order to ensure that the expansion of the central membrane or measuring cell happens only in radial direction, guard cells are mandatory. In another setup, rather than using water, you can even go for gas or oil pressures, but uh, dep it depends upon what, what is the uh, range of pressure you are actually dealing with once you go for these kinds of in situ investigation. And the deformation is measured by means of transducers rather than some measurements for uh, measurements of the volume, uh, some way of measuring the volume. Upon reaching the depth of interest, first the guard cells are expanded that will ensure bracing into the position because if you lower the central membrane, then definitely there will be end effect and uh, later on if you apply gas pressure, th that will rather cause deformation in the soil rather than uh, what is the minimum pressure required for on only the cylindrical expansion of the membrane. So, in order to avoid that situation, you apply first pressure in the guard cells. So, after that the central membrane once it start exp expanding, it will only expand in radial direction and up and bottom it will only expand till till it nullifies the pressure of the guard cell. So, first guard cells are expanded and then measuring cells are expanded with pressurized water. With increase in pressure, the cells start experiencing deformation. Firstly, the deform firstly the pressure is kept constant. So, you apply some pressure and then leave it till that time volume increase becomes constant. You measure how much is the volume increase required for this particular pressure whatever you have applied. Failure is considered you generally consider the failure when the volume of expanded membrane, the membrane once you start pushing it into the soil, so the volume required reaches twice the volume required at that time of loading the soil. So, initially what you have, you did, you actually push the soil back to its original position. So, how much is that volume required to push the soil back to its original position twice that volume, you call it as the volume, uh, I mean addition to uh, um, uh, v naught plus V f, how much is the volume required to cause the failure? You generally de define that as the failure when the uh, volume um, of expanded membrane reaches twice the volume required to push the membrane to its original position. So, that will be generally like V c plus twice V f because V c will always be there before, before actually the soil comes in contact with the membrane. Uh, some minimum pressure will be required to, to for expansion of the membrane itself. So, that is V c and after that if the soil is getting pushed by the membrane to its original position that will be V naught additional same equal amount of pressure that will be called as V f uh, uh, that is V c plus 2 times V f uh, V naught that will be that will define uh, uh, like failure. So, after that ok. So, uh, as we know like uh, with increasing depth confinement will be more, same way uh, because the expansion of membrane is coming into picture. Third thing, system might be having some kind of corrections required. Fourth, if flexible membrane you are using, you have to apply some uh, correction for that. So, before you use the field record for data interpretation or for uh, quantifying the subsoil property, you have to apply certain correction to field recording. These, these are called as system compliance, these are apply, uh, these corrections are uh, required for system compliance, whatever uh, correction required by maybe measuring cylinder, by maybe uh, gauge or, or so and maybe for guard cells also. Then elevation difference, as you go deeper and deeper, uh, more confinement effect will be there, so you have to apply pressure for the uh, correction for that. Then membrane effect, certain minimum pressure will be required for later, for deformation of the membrane itself, just like in dilatometer you had some correction required for uh, stiffness of the membrane, here also there will be some correction. So, these correction will be required in order to get corrected volume as well as corrected pressures. Once you know these parameters, you will be able to understand how, how, how this data can be used further for interpretation. Generally, these, these kinds of correction can be provided by the manufacturer, even suppliers can provide uh, uh, charts for these corrections. Now, guideline says you can do at least uh, you can do pressure meter test at 1 meter interval with respect to depth. If you have to go for shorter interval, you can follow the guideline given by the expert, it may be the designer, maybe field engineer, or maybe the person who is uh, who is um, expert for pressure meter test because depending upon the soil, if the change in lithology is too too high, maybe this guideline kind of thing can change can change. 
ASTM D4719 07 provides guideline for the MBM, MPM uh, Minard kind of pressure meter test. So, this ASTM code provides guideline how what are the typical field record uh, corrections at what interval you have to do, what is the range of pressure you can uh, expect at different different uh, uh, soil type and so on and so forth. Interpretation as I mentioned here, so you will be actually based on your pressure volume method, you will be actually measuring how much is the volume required. If you remember here, we develop this initial when it comes in contact with the soil then like this. So, this will be called as elastic, elastic behavior. this will be called as zone 1. So, this is called as point A, point B and then this is called as limit pressure, pressure limit or P L, this is called as V L, this is called as V naught plus V F, this is called as V naught, this is called as V naught plus uh, V C this is called as VC and so there will be again some VC here. So, that is how you can determine how much is the pressure required at point A, point B. So, V naught is the volume required till point A directly you can get from the field record, VC is volume of uh, cavity like the minimum require, uh, required for deflated probe. Then P naught this will be corresponding to this there will be P naught this will be ca called as um, um, the PF and then P L will be the pressure limit pressure. You can call this as point C. So, all these uh, measurements can be determined using this uh, once you know this uh, this kind of thing. Then you go for interpretation. So, as I mentioned you can actually determine the, the, the modulus here. So, modulus you generally define as like Minard um, uh, pressure meter modulus that is E m defined as 2.66 V c plus V naught plus V f divided by 2 times P f minus P naught over V f minus V naught. So, you know all the values this how you can determine the value of E m that is uh, pressure meter modulus then same way you can determine the elastic modulus that will be called as E m divided by alpha. This alpha depends upon the soil type charts are there based on which you can actually determine how much will the value of alpha and then same way you can determine the value of undrained strength, undrained shear strength that will be called as C u that will be P L divided by 9 only for clays. Simple by measurement of different pressures, you, you are able to determine how much will the Young's model, how much will the shear strength properties, further you can determine in situ horizontal stresses and so on and so forth. So, depending upon as I mentioned here the value of alpha, so soil type if you know you can actually determine how much will the value of alpha. So, for normally consolidated clays alpha value will be 0 0.67. Similarly, for over consolidated clays the value of alpha will be 1.00. For normally consolidated silts the value of alpha will be 0 0.50. For over consolidated silts the value of alpha will be 0 0.67 and then for sand the value of alpha will be 0 0.33. So, that is how you can actually determine how much will the value of alpha. Once you put the value of alpha, you will be able to determine how much will the value of uh, Cu under instant that is P L pre limit pressure divided by the value of alpha and P L you are actually determining from your field records. Okay. So, there are certain advantage and disadvantage just like many, many methods. Uh, one is like you can you are uh, advantage like you can determine uh, different fundamental properties uh, based on simple measurement. Second one is because 
once you start loading the soil sample it is not very small area larger area of so larger volume of the soil is getting loaded under diff different uh, uh, rates of pressures so you are actually able to give the representative soil properties useful for so whatever interpretation you are actually gaining at the site it is very useful for understanding the performance behavior of laterally loaded pile then for even for numerical modeling you you can get more and more data for calibration purpose disadvantage here it cannot penetrate the gravel so if gravel is encountered you have uh, you actually require drilling arrangement so that actually it can push it into the gravel later on you can actually uh, do the test radial expansion in kind of different uh, rocks required uh, skilled labor because uh, you ha you have to be very careful uh, depend uh, for what kind of pressures and volume you are measuring then chances of determination because if you measure the volume of pressures uh, volume of pressure uh, uh, volume of water supplied at different level of pressures if they, that uh, goes wrong then you will end up in misinterpretation of the results so referring to the discussion we just had related to pressure meter test here is a numerical a pressure meter test was conducted at the university site following are the readings at the borehole number 2 the test was conducted at a depth of 4.2 meter that means you have lowered the uh, gauge and then started inflating it at 4.2 meter depth based on bx probe so at times you will be given the diameter of the probe sometime you will be given the standard terminology which has been used to determine a particular probe here it is given as bx i have already to told you what will be the value of cavity for different kinds of probes so we can directly use the value of vc from the probe now we have been given like depends upon the different values of pressure how much was the volume here so we have to determine firstly the pressure meter modulus then we have to determine young's modulus then we have to determine the undrained shear strength of the material which is available at a depth of 4.2 meters to start the numerical firstly based on the value of pressure as well as volume which is given in cc one can determine the value of the pressure versus volume curve this curve is required because initially as we told that initially when you start inflating the membrane will come in contact with the wall of the uh, borehole so initial part will be this particular part which we can see over here after that once the probe is in contact with the borehole you start inflating it and then you will have this particular linear curve and then after it is reaching a value of vf it will go to the plastic zone the soil will go to the plastic zone so considering these typical observations which are visible from the graph what we can uh, we can start determine the pressure meter modulus young's modulus as well as undrained shear strength the solution will be firstly based on probe given is bx based on the table which was there in the previous slide we can get to know for bx probe the volume of cavity vc is known as 535 cc and the diameter of the probe is 58 dia of probe z equals to 58 mm now here we can see based on the graph we have already discussed when there is sudden increase in pressure versus volume curve you will get the, the lower point will be getting the value of v not that is initiation of elastic zone whereas after certain time you will see as though you are increasing the volume the corresponding pressure increase is relatively less that is the initiation of plastic zone so here from the plot from the plot you can determine the value of v not that is equals to 150 cc and the value of p not which will be equals to the pressure corresponding to v not point which will be equals to from this particular curve as 1.2 bar now once you know the value of v not and uh, p not we know 
again from the same graph V f value that is the end of elastic zone the value of V f is given as 212 cc this value 212 cc as well as the value of P f corresponding to V f is given as 5.05 .05 bar. Now, the limiting volume V l we have discussed will be equals to the value of V c plus 2 times V naught. We have the value of V c that is 535 cc plus 2 times the value of V naught that is 150 cc. You will get the value of 835 cc as V l. Now, if we see the pressure versus volume graph we can see that the pressure versus volume graph is not reaching to the value of V l equals to 835 cc. So, in such case what we will do we will try determining the value of P l from plastic region using extrapolation. You have some values in the plastic region that is the value of V naught V versus different different values of pressure in this particular region so using these values you can determine the value of P L based on extrapolation such that it will be corresponding to V L value of 835 cc. So, now here you see based on value of based on extrapolation extrapolation the value of P L corresponding to V L equals to 835 cc is 10.5 bar. Now, extrapolation so slightly there can be uh, change in the values you are getting based on the extrapolation. Once the value of V l as well as P l are known to you, you can determine the value of pressure meter uh, modulus. So, you can determine it as E m which is given as 2.66 V c plus within bracket V naught plus V f over 2 P f minus P naught over V f minus V naught we have got the values of V naught, V c, V l in the previous slide. So, you we are going to directly use the values here. V c value is 535, V naught value is 150, V f value is 212 that also we have estimated based on the graph. P f value is 5.05, .05, P naught value is 1.2 divided by 212 minus 150. Using this one can determine the value of pressure meter modulus that is E suffix m as 118.27 bar. Now, for Young's modulus, E can be determined as E suffix m that is pressure meter modulus divided by the value of alpha. Now, for normally consolidated clays, the values of alpha is given as 0 0.67. So, we will be using the same value of alpha as 0 0.67 and pressure meter modulus says 118.27. This is going to give us the value of Young's modulus as 176.52 bar. 
So, this was part 1 of the question, this was part 2 of the question. The third part of the question is to determine undrained shear strength. Undrained shear strength. which can be determined as P suffix L divided by 9. This empirical formula is also given. So, we have the value of P L equals to 10.5 bar divided by 9, which is going to give you the value of 1.16 bar. So, we have been uh, based on the uh, inputs given in the numerical uh, problem, we have been calculating the value of pressure meter modulus that is E suffix m, Young's modulus that is E, undrained shear strength that is P L over ni uh, 9. So, without even uh, collecting any kind of samples, we are able to determine this particular way the value of different modulus in terms of strength properties of subsoil medium using pressure meter test. So, this is about pressure meter test, I will stop it here. Uh, 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 just by measuring field uh, 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 typical uh, values of uh, volumes and pressures required at different different level if you are able to interpret you will be able to get based on these two values how much is the in situ strength and remember this is more suitable um, more suitable because you are actually loading the soil and corresponding to each increment of load or how much is the deformation you are actually doing at the site of interest. So, with this we actually come to an end of uh, different geotechnical investigation, there might be other me methods also, but as far as uh, the lectures for this course is concerned, we will be discussing about, we have discussed about four, 5 methods. So, in the coming classes, we will be starting with the geophysical methods, which we call as indirect methods. So, we will go into more details in the next class. Thank you.